I hear the call of the stars. G'day guys, Duckfield here. Welcome to game number two of the semi-final B from the Australian WCG qualifiers from Adelaide, South Australia, where all of the folks down in Adelaide Town have come down to play at this uh, little LAN event to uh, try and qualify for WCG Australia national qualifications. Uh, so no, there's a lot of qualifications all over the place, but hey, whatever. Um, so this is going to be game number two between a GG fight here up in the red against his uh, his opponent, the other Terran down in the bottom, TA Voices. So. Um, Voices, of course, in the previous game, it went up a little bit in the economy stakes and just sort of kept it on board from there, doing a lot of uh, cliff-based harass with his tanks. Uh, not Brood War style, where you actually get up on top of a cliff and harass with tanks, actually down on the bottom of a cliff, where you sit down the bottom, harass into your opponent's production buildings, which he did quite well there on Metalopolis in the previous game. So we're going to see if Fight can actually uh, bring it back here another game. And if he is going to uh, take out voices in this particular one, I have not actually seen uh, any of these replays, so um, I'm not actually sure if this is a longer game, but um, Zelnug Cabins actually generally does actually turn into longer games with uh, TBT, as we would have seen if you had a quick look at, uh, what was it, it was Bomber versus Bjorn on the GSL. If you haven't actually seen that game, go and watch it. Holy crap, that was awesome. Um, that was from the, uh, what was that, that was Code S, I think, Code S semi-finals. Wow, what an amazing game, especially for a TBT. That was uh, really good fun to watch. So if you don't already watch the GSL, jump onto GOMTV.net and have a look at those games as well. Um, and meanwhile, I've just got the scouting SCV coming in here for fight. He's going to get inside, see a little bit of what's happening here in Voices Base. You can see that there is only just the one gas for the moment here. The Rax is now done. He may have to retreat in just a moment. He's going to uh, just check out what is happening on that uh, refinery again. And we'll see what the plan is here. Voices putting down the refinery there. Ooh, okay. Um, deciding that it is not a good idea to take that refinery, or perhaps it was just a little bit of a, uh, a mind game there for uh, for fight. Perhaps if he had have actually seen the refinery, did he? No, he didn't. Okay. A little bit weird, but um, either way, or perhaps he was just, he actually meant to put down a supply depot. It does happen from time to time. You press the wrong button and automatically put down the refinery, but uh, it does happen every now and then. But we'll see what these guys are up to. Just for the moment there, they are actually exactly the same sorts of builds. We're just checking out what Voices could see with his scouting SCV, which did get inside. Saw the racks, uh, saw just one of the gas, and now Fight is actually getting his second gas up. While we're waiting for this game to get a little bit more uh, exciting in terms of what's happening here, um, thank you to FXO Frequency who got the uh, the replays from this event for me, which took place yesterday, the 23rd of July. Um, thank you to uh, yeah, thank you to Frequency for getting these through for me, and uh, we'll have a look at. Uh, make sure you do watch all of these games here. We've got the the two semi-finals, or the one between Spider and uh, Bielsko and then also this game, and then the grand final as well, which I still haven't actually watched, so I'm quite excited to see what happens here in this match. Obviously, we're going to have a Protoss versus Terran grand final, but which one of these Terrans will actually be the one that uh, progresses through and uh, goes to the grand final? Now, keep in mind, I'm not sure if I actually mentioned it, but um, whoever wins the grand final of this event goes through the national qualifiers, and then they'll have to face off against some of the other high-level players at the nationals, which takes place in uh, Gold Coast, Queensland, um, which will have some of the other high-level players like Moonglade and Mafia, etc, etc. But these guys now are not actually, still not really differing here. We're going to have a uh, reactor here from Voices, so he's probably going to go for a Banshee in just a moment, and Fight is going to do the exact same thing. Here he goes here with that uh, Starport now switching over and pumping out a Banshee. In fact, both these guys have, uh, in fact, no Voices doesn't actually have a Banshee on the way yet. He is getting close, interestingly. But he is a bit busy here splitting up those Marines to make sure that they do not die to the Hellion there. The Hellion does actually fall itself from fight, and now a Hellion is out from Voices, so he's going to be in a nice spot there. He's actually going to burn down all of those Marines and is now free to do all sorts of harassment if he can get across. Now finally building a Banshee there. Uh, Voices is going to have enough... To, uh, he, he should be able to get one out in time as well, but a scan does go down. Actually sees that uh, the Tech Lab is uh, flashing away, like it's a party in that thing. And then also that the starport is on the way as well. So he's at, oh hello, he's actually cancelled the um, the banshee and cloak. 
and he's going to get a Raven out. So he's going to be able to uh, utilize the Raven, which is, of course, a very powerful unit, not only for uh, detecting the Banshees, but also for harassing. You can drop down a couple of Auto Tarrasts, and they last about 18 years for some reason, and uh, they do a lot of damage if you actually get a couple of them down at the same position. So we'll see if uh, Voices is going to utilize that for that purpose, or if he's just going to use it to cover an expansion. But just for the moment, Voices is just scouting out here, just trying to check out where this Banshee is, probably trying to see if it's coming down that back path there, but the Banshee is actually running straight in here, and now, in fact, yeah, we've actually got the Marines sitting here with the Raven, along with the turret, just about to pop up, there it is, and he is going to be quite well defended, in fact, the Banshee trying to fly through the back there, gets a couple of shots on its back there, and uh, will have to retreat, and now a Viking is also on the way, so he's uh, going to have a brilliant position to deflect this Banshee, harass and now fighters probably realize that he's not going to get too far with that switching off the starport back onto another spot and perhaps he will put down some other type of building there in a moment but uh, both these guys now expanding we've got the orbital command already on the way here for uh, fight so he's going to be a little bit ahead once that expansion gets up voices meanwhile is just getting this command center up I'd be a bit surprised if he didn't get the orbital command but no. okay cool he's not going to do it fair enough He's not going to get it, he's going to actually head straight over, but here comes the secondary Banshee here from Fight actually taking out uh, the SCV, is he about to? Yeah, there he is, does take it, take out the SCV that was on the uh, building racks there, but the Raven and the Viking come across and they are going to push that Viking away, uh, the Banshee away, and now he is safe to expand here down at the natural. So. Both these guys now taking their natural expansions. We do see, in fact, hello, here comes the Banshee again. He's not done, but the Raven is there with those Marines and should be quite enough to deflect that attack. But here is the expansion of fight. We've got that up and running, taking both of those gas there. So he may be looking to do some sort of, uh, some really heavy pressure earlier on if he's going to get these uh, that quick. But voices with these uh, sneaky, sneaky Hellions. Oh, here they come. They're going to come inside the natural expansion there, taking out one, no, none, one of those SCBs. The Hellions get taken out, and that was actually quite uh, cost inefficient there for, uh, for voices, actually. Not really doing anything at all. Taking out one SCV, it's not even worth the cost of the, uh, of the Hellion, but um, just a bit unfortunate there. But again, really weird. <laughs> Canceling that uh, refinery again. And, um, Looks as if he's going to stick perhaps with a little bit more of a heavier rack style. Yes, he is. He's got the uh, he's got the four racks up now, actually, with one reactor on here on this one, just to the side. Uh, the tech lab on the factory is searching for the uh, the cure for cancer, but in fact, it's actually going to find the cure for siege tank mode, and he's going to take that out. And here comes the Banshee, just actually checking out what's happening here at the watchtower. Finds that uh, the tank is here and he's going to take that out, and there goes that Banshee as well. So the Viking-Raven combo is doing nicely here for deflecting these attacks. The first initial Viking uh, Banshee over here is just sort of floating around. Probably want to send this guy home and uh, and repair that up, um, but not sure if he's got car insurance. Uh, Banshee insurance? I don't know, something like that. Some kind of insurance to repair that one up, but either way, it looks as if Fight is going to come down here with another attack, but uh, Voices is, is should be prepared. Prepared, I would think. It sort of depends how the battle positioning goes here. With only one tank out, that's actually not going to be very good for voices at all. With the four tanks here from fight, he is actually going to look quite nice for the moment. The one problem I have is this uh, this Banshee that's in a little bit of red. I'm not going to really see that do too much damage. In fact, voices has decided it's his own turn to attack with the Raven, Marine, and tank combo, along with one Viking in the sky as well. But down here at voices' base, he's actually... This is actually a little bit of a reverse of the previous game. Instead of voices uh, sieging up on the production facilities of a fight, we actually have fight sieging up on the production of voices. So, going to lose this this racks, unfortunately, probably going to lose his starport unless he lifts it up pretty quickly here. A tank is now done, and inside the main base of a fight, we do have all of these marines here. The marines do not have stim or combat shields, so they are actually going to fall quite quickly. But fight. Maybe prepared here, I'm not actually sure. Looks as if he will lose uh, some of these units. He actually taking out some of the um, already from uh, Voices, but Voices is only sitting here with these Marines. Now the uh, auto turret chucked down, but the auto turret actually ironically is soaking up the damage from the siege tank, which then in fact hit the, uh, the units of Voices as well. And now the siege tanks are going to work here. Probably want to lift up the uh, other siege tanks and bring them into the main base here and then give himself a nice little lead. But it looks as if uh, Voices is taking out uh, some of these production facilities. And now in fact Fight is actually supply capped 
and Voices isn't just yet, but Voices actually has a really hard time actually getting some production out of here. Losing this, uh, he may lose this racks and may lose a couple of these supply depots. And at the front of the uh, natural expansion fight, he's starting to lose SCVs here as well with a couple of Marines sitting there. And look at these extra buildings here from fight. Not actually going to get too far if those Marines have something to say about it, but a couple more Marines from fight coming outside to take care of them. Siege tank is being lifted into the main, is now taking out the, the uh, racks there. But at the front, it looks as if fight actually just moves straight in here and is now uh, laying lay siege across this uh, command center, the orbital command that was sitting there and now is going to have an easy time of actually pushing into the main base here. This is going to be quite interesting because the only forces left here for voices are these three marines, the tank and the raven and uh, that is all he has here. He's now actually getting uh, quite quite busy here with his um, with his units just up in the uh, in the main but the problem he has is that if he walks down that ramp that is actually a bit of a death trap with the three tanks sitting out here along with the with the banshee in the sky he's not really going to get too far but he's going to give it a go anyway here he goes here that tank is going to go down pretty quick there it goes no stim on these marines just yet for four voices and he does actually take out all of that attempt to contain there but the problem he has is if we look at the supply tab, we actually have voices sitting there at 56 to the 79 of fight. So fight is still in a really nice position, obviously picking off some of those supply depots, picking off a racks and a starport as well. Is that the same starport? Yes, it is. So he didn't actually get the starport, but um, voices is now going to have the problem of his economy. And now it's starting to push in here is fight. He's going to come inside with this Viking tank marine mixture. And he, is, he should be able to take care of this. He does actually have stim now along with his combat shield so those marines will last a long time and now actually pulling back with those marines nice little bit of marker there making sure that those scvs don't surround and now the tank uh, the two tanks actually from fight have actually been taken out so that's uh, sort of changed the stakes just a little bit here with voices now after three tanks is uh, going to be okay just for the moment but we're going to see what Voices has up his sleeve. I still don't actually think this is a favorable position for him. He's now going to contend with the uh, production capabilities of fight. He's got a couple of racks out. He does have two factories pumping out siege tanks, as we can see here. And he is going to be able to attack again. This uh, resupply of forces now coming through with three tanks in the mix there, along with those 15 Marines and a couple of medevacs and a couple of uh, Vikings as well. He should be able to take care of this. He's now coming across to the side. He probably did see that Voices is now pushing through. And the siege going up there from those tanks and they're going to be able to hold back any attack on the side here but it looks as if the scv is actually scattered out exactly where those forces are and now we see that fight is trying to push down the map if he can get inside the natural expansion of voices he will be in a fantastic spot but the siege tanks sieging up laying absolute waste to those uh, marines that were in the clump there that is actually that gg voices leaves the game and that was uh, pretty, quite pivotal there, taking out all of those Marines in that big clump and uh, pretty much just won the game right there, straight up. But, of course, uh, Voices was in a bit of a detrimental position already because of the, uh, the loss of the economy at the natural expansion. Um, so we will go into a game at three between these guys, so stay tuned for that one. Um, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this series. Make sure you watch the PvP between a Spider and Bielsko as well, and uh, also jump into the grand final when you're done. Cheers.